This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. This show is broadcasting live from the Podcast Detroit Studios in Royal Oak, Michigan. For more information about the show or our network, please visit www.podcastdetroit.com. Fresh off of our Pokemon Go expedition, you are listening to the number one ranked <laughs> technology <laughs> podcast on SoundCloud this, this week, week. We go to box for two minutes. We feel shame. This is episode 155 <laughs> of the IT and the D show. We have a jam-packed studio audience. We have Rick Whiten here from Paraphrase trying to redefine the translation business in, uh, in software. Um, but it should be a fun conversation. We also got J.D. Marshall and Ross Kosterko in the house doing a benefit comedy for cancer. Always helping out the kids, which we're big fans of. How do we reach the keys? Exactly. Seeds. We got awesome sponsors, Merit, Quip, Earth Class Mail. Uh, should be a fun topic. We have all, all the trailers just came out. We can't wait to talk about a whole bunch so of things. So many things. Uh, this is episode 155. Dave, do your magic. The following program is intended for mature audiences. This is my, my Max Headroom. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever. <gasps> this is Billy D. Williams. Bob and Dave and I are enjoying a Colt 45 right now. And remember, IT in the D, it works every time. You're listening to the IT in the D show. Hi, it's Count Chocula, and you're listening to IT in the D. Whatever the hell that is. Just where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! I used to hang out at the Mogumbo Bar. It was a rough place, the seediest dive on the wharf, populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It's worse than Detroit. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come! Shut up! I f- Dig you IT geeks. This is Dre DeMatteo from Sons of Anarchy. You are listening to IT in the D. So what happens when you tap the angry beaver in the bumhole? <laughs> exactly. Come on. Get the hell with this. I'm calling a break. We'll come back to the D show. Hi, this is Ralph Macho, and you're listening to IT in the D show. Wax on. You know what. Bob loves it in the camp. What's up, everybody? This is Billy Zapka. Sweep the leg. Listening to IT in the D show. No mercy. I may have to wipe the geek off. Hi, this is Martin Cove, uh, John Kreese from the Karate Kid movie. And you're listening to IT in the D. Yes, Are we at a break yet? Hi, I'm Ernie Hudson, and you're listening to IT in the D. All you nerds out there. Nerds! Nerds! Nerds. 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 What is a nerd? I'm a nerd, and uh, I'm pretty proud of it. This is Scott Stein of Big Pump Pump. IT and the D Show is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. Yeah, You're in your like, underwear? I'm in my underwear. Here, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. I definitely <laughs> want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. That's why I like it in a can. Which kind of scares the shit out of me. Shut up, Barry. Hello, everybody. This is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Men. I'm a techie. I'm a nerd, fellow podcaster. My favorite podcast is IT and the D. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to. Well, especially with the back doors open. It's just too big. <laughs> it's way too big. We got screwed at the we same time. The yeah. Time. Really? Should we talk about this? We'll tag team it. Should I keep going, or should I stop? <laughs> we just lost our clean tag on iTunes. This is Robert Hayes, the Ted Stryker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at the Magumbo Bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat steak. Hey, folks, this is WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and you're listening to the IT and the D Show. Tough guy. Ho! My name is Michael Zapsick from AMC's Comic Book Man. You're listening to IT and the D. Come. So... What would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do. Ludicrous speed! Sir, how you better buckle up? Ah, buckle this! Ludicrous speed! Go! On behalf of all of us at the IT&D Show, we would like to send out our condolences to... 
the VCR. May you rest in peace. <laughs> this is episode 155. You're listening to the number one ranked technology podcast on SoundCloud. This week, are we actually? Did we verify that before yeah, the I didn't show? Look. We had that issue last. I week. I didn't look. The what we had four. We had two through five last week. We so had two fine. through seven last week. So <laughs> screw you, USA Today. This is the IT. I know exactly. This is the IT and the D show. We are broadcasting live here in Podcast Detroit in beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. This is Bob, the sales guy, hanging out with Dave the Geek, Nuri, the FNG. Find us online, it in the D.com. Give us a like on the Facebook. Follow us on the Twitter slash IT. Shout out to Randy and Ian, who's going to be keeping you filled with all the links we'll be talking about today. And uh, download the Podcast Detroit app on Apple, Android, or anywhere fine podcasts are sold. And we, um, I just found out you can listen to our podcast on, on uh, Echo, Amazon Echo. You just yell the name yeah. and you can play the podcast. Dude, I swear, I feel like your Alexa is like a battered housewife. <laughs> Alexa, play this thing. Bring me Funyuns. Doesn't work. Um, <laughs> hey, we got an awesome guest. Uh, segment two, we are joined by Rick Lloyd from Paraphrase, redefining uh, the tra- – kind of putting a privacy to what Google Translate yeah, did. the translation kind of a, software. Yeah. Kind of a very cool story. And then uh, segment three, we got J.D. Marshall, Ross, Kater- Ross Kosterko in the house from uh, – from Comedy for Cancer, a awesome benefit helping out kids with cancer, and that sucks, and they're doing great things about it. So we will uh, we'll have fun talking about that. Um, but with that being said... Well, and just a quick recap. So we had our event last week, uh, Thursday night, at uh, Firebird, which I was amazing. I still hate you guys for that. I swear, I was hung over to like 1 o'clock on Friday. You were not feeling good. I had my first... Bob was destroying toilets until well into Saturday afternoon. I had my first American Coney dog. I know we we did we ventured into Coney because got a, of we, worst meatball sandwich. And we my first a, Coney ever, actually. No, that we got a phone f- call. I don't know if I told you this, Nuri. We got a phone call from Grace Caros, who owns American Coney, and she listened to the worst meatball sandwich ever podcast. And she was like, "You guys are hilarious. I'm buying you lunch." So we're like, "We have to go to American." <laughs> um, and it was great. I loved it. Yeah, exactly. Mark your calendars. August fourth, podcaster meetup, Activate Gaming, Ferndale, Michigan, downstairs. I hear there's going to be a shuttle bus taking us over to the studio for tours, yep. and there's going to be some beer from Falling Down, some yep. pizza from God knows where, and video games galore. Probably some vodka from Valentine. Oh yeah. Um, hey, but this segment of the IT and the D show is brought to you by our friends at Merit. If you want a uh, security cert and you don't know where to start and you don't know where to go, uh, you can get complete industry-recognized IT certs through Merit Network's Michigan Cyber Range. Remember we talked about the RFP? Yep. They are doing their own certs. They are doing certified pen testing engineers, certified information system security officer courses. They meet CNSS national security standards and will give you basically everything you need to be a IT Security expert and well, we are all about the penetration test. We are ding. <laughs> Scholarships are also available to anyone from a merit member organization. Course registration fees include the cert exam, which we never, which never happens. But this is cool that they do it. For more details about this and any other high demand cert courses, do us a favor. Visit merit m e r i t dot edu slash certification. Appreciate the support. So, Bob, I, I know you're chomping at the bit to dive right into this one because this is, and I wish, actually, I wish I had it queued up. I thought about bringing it in and I didn't. My dream. Uh, you're the Bob's dream. Uh, a 7 Eleven is one step closer to your dream. Oh, no, it's on. It needs to happen. There's Reno, Nevada. It's test marketed and it needs to be everywhere in all the places. A gentleman ordered a Slurpee. This is a great menu, by the way. A great, great, like, Ensemble chip, a Slurpee, chicken sandwich, donuts, hot coffee, and candy. Was he stoned? I don't know. I think he had to have been stoned. You don't, like, if you're stoned, you don't get hot coffee. You usually get oh, water. Good, good point. Um, but he got candy. And I'll just say Skittles because yeah. I don't think he's getting chocolate because it sounds it sounds like Skittles. Sweet. And it was delivered to him via drone to so his porch. Because the 7-Eleven in question took a survey of all houses within a one square mile radius of them. Right. And said, if we were going to launch this kind of service, what would you want to have delivered? Those chicken the items. That, those are the items. Apparently, chicken sandwich. I've never had a chicken sandwich at Seven <laughs> Eleven. No, I don't want to deliver Funyuns. Let's. I'll replace mine with Funyuns. I want oh, to Funyuns, Vern- a pack of smokes, and a thirty pack of PBR. <laughs> Verner Slurpee. Verner Slurpee. <laughs> Um, it's right. Will the drone have an ID reader? Because I, I would. I would like a thirty pack of PBR, <laughs> a pack of smokes, and like maybe a fifth. Two, <laughs> two tall cans. Right. Yeah, apparently, you required two trips. I can just imagine like a family sitting in their yard. Drone words up. A rope deploys <laughs> down from the heavens. And they comes. did. It said it just oh. it, 
a softly oh. dropped oh. sandwich. <laughs> from the sky. <laughs> this is actually – this is the first drone delivery ever, right, in the United States? For food? Yeah. 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 I figured Amazon was going to beat this, right? Amazon was going to be no, first. No, I thought they, they delivered gonna... like a shoebox full of crap or whatever, but not food. I think it's because the FAA makes it so hard. They said this had to have flight planning and like security and they had to file a flight plan. I don't care about all your planning. I want – the stuff on my porch when I want it, right? <laughs> Without having to interact with another human being. I don't want to talk to nobody. <laughs> Alexa, bring me shit by drone. Right. <laughs> While you're playing our podcast. Right. <laughs> I get – and what if the if the coffee's not hot? Oh, gee, I'm a one-star Yelp review on Take that 7-Eleven. One, one-star Yelp drone review. Yeah, <laughs> outstanding. Chicken sandwich was cold. But you better be careful uh, because we also have <laughs> – they're becoming self-aware – uh, NASA has given has given the Mars rover um, firing authority. The AI within the Mars rover now has firing authority on its laser. Haven't they ever seen that shit movie with Val Kilmer? <laughs> Red, what is it, Red Planet, <coughs> where the robot yeah. killed like almost killed him, or any of the Terminator movies? Right. No, but they weren't or, on Terminator movies. weren't on Mars. Well, it was that Total Recall. Emilio was. Estevez. Uh, the trucks come to life. Maximum Stephen King overdrive. Transformers. Yes, thank you. Maximum Overdrive, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what you're trying to say is if Bob orders a Slurpee, it could be shot from the sky? Well, we've always said skeet shooting for prizes. Like when your neighbor orders a drone, orders you shoot it down. It should be shot from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there would be like, you'd see it. There'd be a big bag of Funyuns, slick, six Slim Jims, two Werner's Slurpees. Um, I think that'd be it. Like, uh, no, uh, no mints. I don't. Would I even get beer? I don't. Is this your Christmas list? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't care. No, that's his Monday. <laughs> that's why I don't care if the Amazon Echo and all that, the the Microsoft Connect and all that listens to me because I know all it is is going. Babe, can you bring me some Funyuns? Babe, can you bring me a Gatorade? And he, so here's the best part of this week: um, a couple of things like hacking and weird things going on. The Pokemon Go thing won't go away, and. We were at an event on Saturday. But here's the best part. Do you remember when we talked about when it first broke that Nintendo stock went up collectively almost like $8 billion? Oh, yeah. Well, guess what? This week, wah, wah. this week they found out, the investors found out that Nintendo well, doesn't no, own it. They released a statement. Like they, they had to do their like quarterly stock filing right. thing and said, by the way, in case you missed the memo, we don't actually own that game. <laughs> ah, Dynamic, Nintendo, yeah. it's all very similar, right? And then in one fell swoop, they just lost 20% of their overall market cap valuation. Yeah. In a day. Well, the thing that I was, I was, uh, I was actually listening to, uh, whatever news I was listening to this morning, uh, drinking my coffee, and they were talking about how it hasn't been released yet in China or... Um, I believe a few other countries, and they're like, if that ever takes off, but then they're like, well, Google Maps hasn't mapped China yet, so they can't because it's all geolocated. Um, so it's well, going to be interesting. China banned it outright before it even became a thing because they said, you're not mapping our air bases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that was the problem. Yeah. So, but speaking of losing all your valuation, let's, uh, let's take a moment to uh, talk about Yahoo. <laughs> uh, Yahoo. Because- Yahoo. Because Yahoo was uh, bought today by Verizon for four point four point six billion dollars, which sounds impressive. It's a pretty good number. Yahoo really, is not coming to really Detroit, is. kids. But it's let's uh, but let's let's look at the, let's look a little of the history here. So Dan, Gilbert, Dan Gilbert's not buying. It's Yahoo, not going to be Q Sorry. Q-Hoo. Uh, so nineteen ninety eight, uh, Yahoo refuses to buy Google for a million dollars. Worst mistake ever. <laughs> That's right up there with Blockbuster refusing to buy Netflix. Or the number three guy at Apple that no one knows his name. Exactly. <laughs> 2002, Yahoo realizes, oops, um, tries to buy Google for three billion. Billion. So it was one million, now it's... But this is 02? Now it's three billion. This is 02. Yeah, this is 02. Okay. So four years later, uh, Google says, eh, give us five. Yahoo says no. Also, second worst mistake ever. Uh, 2008, Yahoo refuses to be sold to Microsoft for $40 billion. What was Microsoft thinking? Third worst mistake ever. No, then they, 2016, they got from Microsoft. They just saved their asses by that one. Eh, could they have made Bing any worse by the acquisition? Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, they weren't copying Yahoo search results, that's for sure. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, so $4.6 in that context. You're like, ah, that's adorable. And Marissa Meyer's staying on. That's the hard thing. Like, 
I don't think anyone out there says she's done good things for the company. Dude, and she's getting a giant, giant fat check, which is why I've always – dude, my career goals, and I have said this and made this clear a million times, my career goal is to get that job that starts with C. I want to be a CIO. I want to be a CEO. I want to be a CTO because they pay you a giant bag of money to come in the door. They pay you a giant bag of money while you're there, and no matter how Badly, you screw up. They pay you a giant bag of money to leave. Dave, you know I don't That's bitch about. That's what I need. You know I don't <laughs> bitch about CEO compensation, right? Because I figure if you get to the level, you're kind of like professional athletes, but right? This one, this one can can eat my ass. Like this one's like fifty million dollars to, to like you've done nothing. Like you, you've turned a turd into a turd. Like you, <laughs> like yeah. there's nothing like a different turd, right? <laughs> <laughs> you make some – I don't – I'm not getting to that. She but, was the first Silicon CEO, I think, to pull employees in from working from home. Yep. And basically pissed off all the people there. I, I don't know. The writing's on the wall for a long time. I think they're lucky to have gotten almost $5 billion. They're lucky. $5 billion? That's insane. That's an insane. Well, no. They just bought it for the the, the picture. Why, why can't I think of a stupid – Tumblr. Tumblr, thank yeah. you. They bought it for that. Like Yahoo. And here's the, th- here's the funny thing. Now, Verizon owns AOL, right? And they own Yahoo. And so that's – they're looking at – and I, I love <laughs> this part of the announcement that they're looking at it as beefing up and enhancing the AOL market. They pretty much own everybody's. You already own fourth. everyone over the age of fifty five. Are they gonna what buy more? CompuServe next? Because if that's the case <laughs> I want my one oh four oh seven five comma one oh five five. Wow, screw me for knowing that, remembering that uh, email address. Oh my I ICQ want. number. Oh. Buy ICQ already. How about MySpace? Let's go buy MySpace. My uh, AOL name is Walton Beer. <laughs> Just I remember that one. <laughs> I wonder if it still works if I put the password in. But here's the thing. like You now own everyone's like third and fourth spam email address, Verizon. <laughs> like, good luck with that. Good, good no for you. No one uses Yahoo. God, who, God knows who uses AOL except for people that vote for Capriati's for best sandwich. Lots of dead people. Right. Lots and then now you own all the – That are still on auto bill. You own all the crap. You own all of it. I, uh, and but, my fantasy football team. So you're saying well, I should get rid of my Yahoo email and get a new email? Yes. All right. Well, because even Yahoo <laughs> finally dropped the requirement that you had to have a Yahoo email to play in their fantasy sports leagues. Um, but so <laughs> the other one uh, that I thought was funny, speaking of like you know security and requirements and all that fun stuff and scams, um, Tinder – Apparently, Tinder has a problem right now. Uh, well, they have a number of issues, but apparently they have a problem right now. <laughs> Bad bars and STDs. Yeah, uh, okay. with uh, bots that are sending out uh, notes about, hey, are you, you know, have you been verified by Tinder? Ooh, this sounds Because, you know, that, that's, you know, so they have like all these bots that are pretending to be chicks or, ha- you know, just people, fishers that are pretending to be chicks uh, that are saying, hey, you know, are, have you been verified by Tinder? Because that's how girls know that you're not some social, like some psycho stalker serial killer. Is that killer. one of those, give me your credit card? For free, so and then it goes. To, later. It goes yeah. to a link. You go to the link. You put in all your data. Yet, and it, it, and it's like Tinder verification, chk dot com or something like that. Uh, you put in all your information, and 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 if you're not paying attention to the fine print, you suddenly have yourself a recurring hundred eighteen dollar a month uh, internet porn bill. Holy ah. With no benefits. With no benefits. And you're not even Tinder verified. You're not. <laughs> yeah, and, and you're still not Tinder verified. Still have no date for sex. And, 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 and you're right. still that sucker on the internet that's paying for Probably porn. Probably still have an though. <laughs> <laughs> but the big bomb that dropped this week, and some people are taking it as gospel, some aren't, but the whole WikiLeaks um, in perfect timing, right in between the two conventions. Right. The Russians and, did it and Populux right. got hacked. Sure. They're you both know, absolutely. You know who's having a bad week? The DNC is having a bad week. Well, not only – so 20,000 emails get released and here's where it gets a little weird and there was, there was a little rundown of – so the DNC leaks, I believe that was the hashtag right. on Twitter. And apparently for like 30 minutes that went away off trending. <laughs> and then it came back as DNC leak. So then everyone that was using it changed it from plural to singular, right? And then it got changed to like space, like D, like right? they, they, it kept getting changed from the trending. So there's this huge, I guess I'll call this a conspiracy, it, but it, there was, it was documented. But it gets deeper. It actually fell off Facebook. So Facebook blocked the link to the WikiLeaks page during this time as well. And then they brought it back later and said it was a technical error that had been blocked. Sure. And it was the Russians who released it because they want Trump to be president. Right. Yep, that's it. But there was some there was some bad bad things 
like he, and here's the thing like the expectation of privacy what we have these days and I heard someone sum it up perfectly is an email there's no expectation of privacy it's no more than a postcard no you don't these days. send an email that you wouldn't want on the front page of your local newspaper precisely and the stuff that went out was was bad bad and Julius Julian Assange dropped another bomb that said um Hillary Clinton will be indicted after the next release. So there's more coming. There's more. But see, here's like, why is he just doing this? Is like, here's a taste. Here's some more. Like, just if you're going to release it, release it. Like, what's his game? Like, is he trying to like? I, He's working for the Russians. Yep. Right. Is he like? <laughs> no. Is he like a clickbait thing? Like number eight will make you. You like will astound oh, you if that amazed you. It's it's your it's <laughs> infomercial one hundred and one. Right. How much did you pay? But don't answer yet. Wait. There's more. <laughs> Took my Anderson Windows sales guy last week. Anyway. Right. Order now and you get a free set we'll of. We'll make a payment guys. for you. <laughs> <laughs> no. But like, how much? Like, if she like, if this had, this has been made like this whole entire. Again, we talked about this earlier. Like, can you just like can you just turn United States political system off and on again and just reboot the Have thing? Have you tried rebooting the United States? <laughs> this right. shit's been going on forever. This just finally like lays bare the just shitty system behind it and the exactly. money and the donors that there's politics behind politics. You don't say, Yo, dog. I heard you like politics. <laughs> yeah. So we put some politics in your politics. So you can have some politics. politics while you politic. <laughs> oh, you politic. right. yeah. <laughs> um, but speaking of politicians, uh, somebody in Seattle is having a whole lot of fun uh, just hanging dildos. Uh, off of any place they can, they can. What I missed this? Oh no! Apparently, like so, like someone so went, like throwing your shoes over their absolutely. So wire? instead of the hey, why is that <laughs> pair of shoes up there? Um, why are there tied together dildos? Ah, and that's hanging, amazing. <laughs> hanging, <laughs> hanging off of electric wires, phone wires, and I loved there was actually a statement from the power company in Seattle that was like, uh, well, it's not really a pressing matter because we've uh, analyzed the situation and we've determined that there is no immediate threat to public safety. I once did work for those guys, actually. <laughs> <laughs> for the guys that are putting the dildos no, 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 out no, no, there? For the electric company. <laughs> but it's even better. They're calling him the Dong Dangler. Exactly. <laughs> right. he, he has a supervillain name. He is the Dong Dangler. You get like, I thought the old wives tale was, well, if you saw shoes over, I think you get like, you buy drugs. Is like, like giving out condoms underneath or like the dogs? <laughs> for the, like, I don't know what's going on it's there. It's got to be expensive, too. How do you kind of like, how do you amass such a Dong collection that you just freely give them to the was, electric Was uh, maybe a store? One out of business. Uh, Is Tom Nardone behind this? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you'd it's have all the publicity. Think he'd be easy to find. <laughs> you would yeah, yeah, exactly. in the walking West around with a knapsack full yeah, of dildos. Yeah, some guy <laughs> running around with a wheelbarrow full of dildos. You guys looking like a porcupine. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> so I think we've got Bob the sales guy. Can we have Dave the dong dangler? <laughs> oh um, no, no, we can't because that that that's bad. That that goes in a whole different direction right there. <laughs> it goes in some sort of hole. <laughs> but the kicker, the thing, like the the, the highlight, I think the, this weekend was Comic Con was going on in San Diego, and they delivered us a sweet treat this weekend of trailers and more trailers yeah. and more trailers, and they make me hate my life because I have to go take my entire crew, family to every one of these movies. Um, they dropped Justice League, which I didn't think was ever going, which wasn't going to happen. I ever. thought they were going to do the Batman first, and um, then their Wonder Woman, and then the, yeah, right. And Aquaman actually was delivering people fish, but he was not riding on a purple seahorse. No which giant me purple off. seahorse, which means when the movie comes out, we have to riot. We've right. had this conversation, and there's no stinking Wonder Twins, which pisses me off to but Jesus. Uh, what next? The Ghostbusters will be women. Come on, <laughs> wasn't it Jan and the Jana? Wonder Twins were super friends. They weren't Justice League. They were they were in the, the Hall of Justice. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, Thank they you. were in there. Yeah, but they were the super friends. They were just friends of the superheroes. I heard, where's Apache Chief? Ine Chuck Ihayaku. And he, <laughs> no, that was no Quasinoyo Nihayaku was the dude with the little tornado. Oh, I thought that was I'm Apache impressed. Chief. No, that was Ine Chuck. Wait yeah. a minute, Aquaman was in the Hall of Justice. Yeah, yes. Like, what the hell could he do if something went wrong? Talk to fish. Talk to fish. Can't get the goldfish to attack the. Exactly. Like worst superhero, superhero power ever. ever. <laughs> well, he's hu- he's huge in Japan with all the hentai with the tentacle porn. He's oh, he's okay. a big big. 
Okay. But he's huge in Japan. He's yeah. with that. But um, <laughs> for all of us, <laughs> Wonder Woman dropped, which was solid. So, so here, no, here, hear me out. So still when, a big, big Gal Gadot fan. When B versus S came out, and that picture from 1918 that they looked at, right? Yeah. And I go, that dude on the left looks like. Uh, Captain Kirk. Uh huh. So when the trailer drops, and Ka- who the hell's on the sand but Captain Kirk? And I go, you can't do that. Like, you can't have Captain Kirk in a damn DC movie. Like, but, the, but sure as shit, it's he's just part of the movie. Of disbelief, Bob. No, it's like. You have to forget the actors. You're going to put Mark Hamill in like 1978. In the Star Trek reboot? Right. No. <laughs> No, you put Edward James almost in that, but not, you know. Well, no, he's that was, Galactic. That was Battlestar Galactic. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> um, I did find this. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. One more, though. Uh, shoot. Um, did you see the King Kong one? Yes. I did not. Oh, so my God. They, they, they forgot the Jack Black King Kong movie ever happened. As well they should. And the dude that made the last Godzilla, which was proper. Go um, right back to the 1918. Went back to yeah. John Goodman is like, hey, there's, here's the... The what was a uh, Skull Island? Skull Island, yeah. yeah. And it was. It looks that movie looks it like looks the money. And they're setting up King Kong versus Godzilla. You can smell yeah. it all oh, yeah. the way. Especially if they got the guy. That I mean, made the tagline it. for this is how Kong became king. Like it, the just the 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 visuals of that when he's standing there and that helicopter's coming out. Yeah, and he's taking over the sun was just. Oh. And he throws that giant banana at the helicopter. Oh, yeah. like, Do you need a moment, Ross? <laughs> <laughs> it was. It, it would. I'm he didn't sorry, throw a banana at the no. helicopter. Bananas are somewhere. But, but there was like 15 shit. movies that came out. Lego Batman, I believe. Doctor yeah. Strange from Marvel. I mean, like. So, but related to that, I, I found this. I talked about this on a, a Saturday uh, with the Waystation crew uh, after the remote. Uh, Marvel has announced that basically there will be no new X Men. Uh, because Fox owns the rights to the movies. And right. so that's why all the new characters that Mar- Marvel is pushing are the Inhumans. Uh, you know, that they're, they're not mutants. They're, like, of inhuman origin. Fox, Fox owns basically the word mutants. Now. Yeah. And so, like, they're, so basically Marvel is trying to tank anything and everything. Like, like, like the new X-Men comics that are coming out, all of the mutants have been sterilized by this gas going around, so there can be no more mutant kids, no more mutant, well, no more also, mutants. They also basically killed off the Fantastic Four because of the same reason, because right? They because that sucks. Else. Well, because they why. just <laughs> well, there is. That, they <laughs> just, never liked it, but I mean, they that's, screwed that's that franchise yeah. three times at the theater. Okay. Let's be honest, no, Jessica. Voted. Jessica Alba couldn't save that franchise, and that's a sad, sad thing. <laughs> when when Jessica Alba cannot save you in a movie theater, Captain America, yeah. Jessica Alba, and it still sucked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did find it funny. Uh, like, yeah, kind of, some funny haha, some high, this milk smells funny. Uh, two Florida EMTs uh, lost their jobs uh, this week. What'd they do? <laughs> they were um, apparently encouraging each other and trying to encourage other EMTs, which is what ultimately got them busted, uh, to escalate their selfie game with unconscious patients in the back of ambulances. <laughs> 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 so they were uh, trying to escalate their game of uh, patients in more and more compromising positions uh, themselves in more and more compromising positions with the patients. Uh, they tried to rope in their fellow coworkers, and thankfully they had a coworker that went, uh, yeah, no, hi, HR. <laughs> Isn't there something that happened a couple months ago where a, a surgeon, a guy went in for a, a hernia surgery, left yes. his phone recording, and the doctors were like making fun of his penis size? Oh, yeah. Oh you yeah, remember, I remember that? Just, like, that was a Aww. huge. No, that was a huge thing. No, because here's the, like. Um, no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't huge. I got <laughs> apparently it wasn't. That was the problem. <laughs> I have do- yeah, I have dozens of friends that were EMTs, now firefighters, paramedics, and like even just them telling me stories, like I had to get this hot chick and her boob fell out. Like I'm like, don't stop, just don't tell me. But these clowns taking selfies, like you deserve the book. Would they? Would like, they arrest them on? What's like the the charge you can get? For that. Isn't it a HIPAA thing, like a, the patient, patient confidentiality? It was the reckless endangerment they hit them with. Uh, well, kind of like the same thing with the Playboy chick uh, that took the Snapchat of the lady in the shower. You can't just randomly disseminate photos oh, of people on the internet. Is. Two they charges were, they of following that one. They missed that. Oh, so uh, there was a Playboy model uh, who was in a gym, a uh, Lifetime Fitness out in California, uh, and she took a snapshot of some other woman coming out of the shower. She claims she was just trying to send it to a friend, but she posted it to her public 
Snapchat story. We all make that. Of course, uh, that basically said, if I can't unsee this, neither can you. Well, she has since been uh, banned by Lifetime Fitness. Uh, she, for her lifetime? Yeah, for, for her lifetime. <laughs> uh, she is being uh, investigated by the LAPD because, uh, again, you can't disseminate images, especially naked ones of people on the internet. Uh, so, yeah, no, that was a, that was a fun story. You guys missed that story. Apparently. Here it is. Interception and disclosure of oral communications, a felony, and one count of misdemeanor battery because apparently he held – Someone's eyelids open while they selfied. Good That's God. That's pretty screwed up. So now, Bob, I know you're getting ready uh, to travel out of the yeah. country this week. So this is, a, this is a big story. I want to make sure you are aware and you are prepped and you take precautions. I have my vitamins. Uh, <laughs> you have your shots? <laughs> That's right. I've got my Viagra. Con- <laughs> uh, it's vitamins, quote. Uh, so apparently uh, Homeland Security uh, can confiscate your phone uh, with uh, no cause. Uh, no reason, no anything whatsoever, uh, and and you pretty much just have to hand them over, hand it over to them, or you are resisting uh, and inhibiting an investigation, and yo ass is grass. So is that that whole hundred miles in the border? Uh, Fifty. Fifty it miles. So 50 I remember minutes. when that came out, and the conspiracy people were like, "You're crazy! It's never going to happen!" And now it's happening. And now it's this happening because it, it applied to a journalist. If I'm not mistaken, I'm going to make up a number here, but like seventy five percent of the population lives within fifty miles uh-huh. of a border or of a coast of a coast. Right. Correct. So like this, you know, unless you're living in like mid, you know, yuck yuck Nebraska, uh-huh. like you're you're pretty screwed. Yeah, it's pretty screwed up. And you can also have your laptop confiscated if you're traveling for work. Uh-huh. They can take it. They can copy the contents of your hard drive and give it back to you. So when I travel for work, I don't take my personal devices. I take my work devices. It's, well, that's My whole point is to unplug. Yeah, I'm going to bring my phone just so I can delete my Gmail so I don't come home to 3,000 Gmails. They take your phone and then copy all your dirty pictures off. I mean <laughs> – <laughs> That's already going on Google Plus, and Dave already has the email password. Yeah, he's already screwed that up twice. <laughs> <laughs> so the other story, too, about traveling out of the country, uh, there was a, a release that almost half of all TSA employees have been cited for misconduct. Dude. So the people who are groping your balls as you're going through security. And looking through your phone. I typically thank them. That's a bad thing. That's 30,000. Yeah, do I have to tip? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So that's 60,000 employees, so 30,000 of them have been cited for misconduct. Right. So misconduct could be which stealing ver- your shit. Exactly, which varied from um, illegal searches and like going through people's bags at the airport to – The collective duty, walking to, away from their posts. To the guy who was helping people smuggle 250 pounds of cocaine into the country. Uh, yeah, that's that's misconduct. That's not a felony. <laughs> see, that's a misconduct. See, now that apparently. we've talked about it in the show, they've flagged Bob. Bob is going to get extra groping <laughs> and his shit copied when he comes oh, back. I so, Sorry, I'm, I'm so getting your itinerary from Bo. <laughs> And they've, they've cut, and they've cut Hi, zero bro. terrorists. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with Rick Woid, fo- founder of Paraphrase. This is the IT in the D show, and we will be right back. IT in the D. Read. Meet. Listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. Hey, this is John Schneider from Nip Tuck Smallville, the haves and the have-nots. So, oh, Dr. Quinn, hot in Cleveland. Secret Life of the American Teenager and just about everything you can possibly imagine. And oh yeah, the Dukes of Hazard. You're listening to Bob and Dave. See IT in the D show. IT in the D.com. I want to know. What you- this is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back. This is segment two, episode 150. Five. This is the one and only IT and the D show. We're broadcasting here live. Podcast Detroit, beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. This is Bob the Sales Guy. Captain Soundboard Dave the Geek is manning the soundboard. Because I said Captain Soundboard. Hey, have you read the USA Today? Today. Today. <laughs> it went to the ATM machine. I used my PIN number at Nuri, the ATM machine. <laughs> Nuri the FNG is in the house somewhere. Find us there online. He is. Find us online. IT in the D.com. Give us a like on the Facebook. Follow us on the Twitter. And do us a favor. Uh, find Find out where we're where we're at at the meat tab. That's M E E T, not M E A T. You've been teasing this for like five weeks. Where the hell are our meat sticks? I'm working on it, and. Um there's a learn tab. There's a whole bunch of fun stuff going on. We do. And uh, so, again, don't forget, uh, thir- next Thursday, uh, August 4th, we will be over at Activate Gaming for the Metro Detroit Podcasters Meetup. And then our next IT casual networking social will be the 18th, two Thursdays after that, uh, at the Blackfin. 
back room, home base, normal start time. Before we get rolling, though, so hey, so here's the deal. Uh, the way we work today is dumb. We are drowning in email. We are interrupted by meetings and getting nothing done. That is the story of my day every day at the office constantly. So stop asking yourself, where's that file? When was this decision made, etc.? which is my life every day with Bob. Uh, quit work. <laughs> it, it, no, it is. It, it, hey, did you get this? You remember the Gmail that we updated? The email yeah. that we updated this with that? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's V2, V final, version 2, Dave edit, Bob edit. Underscore 1. It's no, we, we rely on Nuri Gmail. Red. Gmail yeah. is our database. It truly is. So quit working dumb. It's not your fault. It's the tools you use. Work smart with Quip. So with Quip, you communicate with as little email as possible. Each living document created in Quip has built-in chat functions so you can communicate with your team. Real-time communication about the content being created. No more email chains. Uh, and sharing links and attachments via email. Easily manage your team with shared folders and notifications. Quip also features Slack integration. We like Slack. Slack's a great tool. So today, over a million users and thousands of teams have adopted Quip's living documents over email, files, and superfluous chat. Companies that use Quip include Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, CNN, Quora, New Relic, Instacart, Product Hunt, Stripe, and Taser. Uh, So try it out for yourself. Get six months of a Quip team plan free when you visit quip.com slash IT in the D. That's quip.com slash IT in the D. You get a free six-month team plan. I'm pissed off at us that we have not signed up for this yet. We're, I'm doing I'm that tomorrow. It. I'm on it. Or if you're done, I will. Done. So there you go. Quip.com slash IT in the D. Make your life easier because I, I know it's going to simplify the shit out of our lives for the love of God. <laughs> there. <laughs> and with that... We are joined, and you've been very patient. we're professionals. <laughs> exactly. Rick Woyd's in the house from Paraphrase, and you guys reached out to us, I believe, um, basically saying, hey, you know, Google Translate isn't secure. And I'm like, wait, it's not? And you guys have built a solution to combat that. So talk to me about, I mean, when did you realize it wasn't secure? And I guess, how did you guys start this whole thing up? Well, like, you know, everybody else, uh, we... First thing we did after we opened up our Google.com account was read the terms and conditions, right? You, I mean, you that's, did? That's what everybody did. The entire oh, everyone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. The I check is in your mail. I, yeah. I promise I'll pull out. <laughs> I, I read the terms of service. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we did the same thing, you know. And so, no, what, you know, I started talking to our customers uh, about Google Translate. Everybody was talking about it. And, uh, you know, I asked our customers, you know, are you using it? And they all said, yeah, you know, we are using it. And I'm like, you know, the, the translations aren't really any good. They're like, yeah, we don't, we don't really care. You know, we get these emails and stuff. We just got to know what they need. We just you know. need the gist. The gist. Yeah. Yeah, gist thing. Well, exactly. when I was in China, I used yeah. Google Translate extensively. Right. And it basically would be close, right? It's right. It's like place for you to eat food and things. It's like, oh, this is a restaurant. Okay, well, great. And, and then you run into the situations where, like, you have, you know, so you can't, you know, the Chevy Nova, they can't sell it in Mexico. Right. Why? Because that means no go. Uh, you have KFC, the whole, it takes a tender man to, or it takes a, a tender man, to, uh, well, no, what was it? It takes a tough man to make a tender chicken, which translated in China to it takes a man with a hard erection to make a chicken affectionate. Mm. <laughs> and so, yeah. <laughs> There was the airline that said fly naked. Yes. That, that was a good one. Yep. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Pepsi, the taste of a new generation, right. which apparently translated to it brings your dead ancestors back from the grave. That was all great marketing. Yeah. I have to have <laughs> Pepsi right now. I'm frowning on them. You didn't do too bad in China because you didn't get arrested. So, it's true. you know, I mean, it worked out okay for you. It worked out okay in some ways, right? But the other half of that is Google is indexing all of those things, right? Well, that's the dirty secret is that a lot of people don't know that Google Translate is a funnel. You know, it's for their search engine. No. I know. Can you believe it? What, <laughs> what is it, surprise, what is it you Dave, know? you always say if you're, not the, if you're not paying for it? If you're not paying for the service, you are the service. Exactly. So wait, so what are they doing? Because I, I use it religiously because I don't spell good in German. And when my family... Um, my family texts me all the time on Facebook Messenger. How you doing? How's the family? How's the kids? I'm like, oh crap! I don't know that word. So I like, I'm all of a sudden now I'm typing everything in Google Translate. Like, what are they? Like, what the hell are they indexing? Like all the content that you're putting in there. So my kids are doing well. Like, they Dude, care? have you never have you never noticed that like when you open your Gmail, the content of your Gmail will influence the ads that show up in the sidebar. Right. I don't look at the damn ads on the sidebar. Well, for you, you're not a paraphrase customer. But, you know, for a multinational company that they're putting sensitive emails in there to try to find out what they say because they don't read that language, 
you know, it is an issue. True. You know, or you're putting contracts in or you're putting disputes in. Right. You know, last year there was a big thing in Japan where a couple of executives at a real estate company got, you know, in a heated argument and they used an online translator and boom, next thing you know, it's in Japan news and I get to hear about it. Yeah. You know, so that's why we came up with paraphrases to give them something safe uh, to use. And then, you know, artificial intelligence is the next big thing. We'll see, you know, when we get a decent robo call, I'll believe it. Right. Or a decent robo email, then, you know, I'll know it's working. Or when I get a good Tinder message. Yeah. Hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when your bot doesn't get pissed at you. you right. Know? So. So how do you get, I mean, is it in your T's and C's that, Everything will be secure and locked down. I mean, guys, how do you, how are you proving this to your customers? Well, proving it is always a challenge, right? Because it's invisible. I mean, it's in the background, right? You know, but I mean, it's it's you know, it's something that's in our guarantee. You know, we use the Microsoft Translator uh, technology, but we don't return anything back to Microsoft. We pay for that. You know, we're not paying for the translations. We're actually paying for security. We're paying for not to return anything. How many companies know that things are getting returned? Now, that's what I'm curious about. Do you know, a, a lot of companies are still figuring that out. I mean, you know, let, let's be honest. I mean, we're we're kind of a reactionary kind of, you know, business environment where, you know, we don't get in the front of things. We get in the back of things after something happens. Well, that's so. that's security in a nutshell, right? Yeah. I'm not buying a f- right. firewall until I get right. hacked. You yes. Know? Yeah, Target spent a lot of money up front on that uh, <laughs> security before they got hacked, right? Yeah, exactly. You know? So that's uh, that's a challenge. And then we also learned that they were – they were translating stuff using their internal people on staff, and they didn't have any technology, and they were taking way too long to do it. So we said, you know what? We'll give them a whole platform that's secure and that allow them to do their own translations and their own time with their own people and do it faster. And I've worked for so many call centers. Where they're like, okay, well, we're servicing Spanish customers. Can you find some representative on the floor who speaks Spanish, take them off the phone for three days, They'll record it. They'll voice it. They'll the whole thing. So you're right. People they they look inside of their company to find these things. At what cost, right? Well, and so one of the things I noticed about what you guys have going on is so it has even though you're you know you're not storing things the way that uh, Google is, it does have a memory feature so that as you get used to users. Translations can happen faster because it has that memory of this is the typical writing style, these are the typical translations, that kind of thing. So, if how do you balance that store not store? Well, it's it's two things like like on the on the main page where you got the boxes, it's kind right. of like Google Translate. Nothing gets stored there. Okay, so that gets scrubbed clean immediately. So that's that's your gisting. Okay, and then when you translate a document and you upload a document to the service and then you edit it. You know, maybe you got a colleague in Mexico that, you know, finishes your translation for you. You share it with them. They make their changes. That gets stored. And okay. That improves. That's how it learns. Gotcha. So then it improves the gisting and it improves all the documents that you translate. Okay. So, and you're getting some adoption, yes? Like, oh, you, yeah. you, ha- you have some installs yep. out there that are, that are up and running. Like, who do you have up and running with this already? We've got Daimler Trucks out in Portland using it. We've got uh, locally Delphi uses it, JCI uses it. Obviously, a lot of automotive. I mean, that's you know where. Well, because we yeah, I mean, you're here locally, Detroit that's based. Where we yes, started, yeah. yeah. And then we started reaching out on doing AdWords and things like that. And then we started picking up law firms and financial firms. LegalZoom even uses it. Really? Wow. So you know, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody's going to need some kind of secure platform to do this stuff. Very true. So, I mean, I, I guess who who that you're not reaching yet, like who is your target demographic that should be checking this out now? We got to get to that C level. You know, you got to get to that CIO level that says, hey, you know what? We need something. You know, we need a license here that protects the whole organization. So in what like what it what does a license go for? Um, they start at about twenty five dollars a person and then they, they go down. You okay. Know, I mean, it can go down to as, as little as a couple dollars a person a month. So for the and for those who don't really, how does that compare across the industry with other platforms and that, and that do the That's same kind of thing? That's a good question because there's not a lot out there. Okay, you, know, you got you got a company out of New York, well funded company called Smartling, but their market is more like you know we do a bunch of websites, we do you know you got projects with two hundred two million words in it. We'll help you do that better, faster. Gotcha. You know where ours is almost you know ours is a little bit of a translation product and also kind of a risk management kind of an insurance product 
making sure that your organization isn't, you know, somebody isn't inadvertently dumping things. Because you should okay. see the expressions on people's face when I tell them, hey, you know, have you ever read the Google Terms and Conditions? Yeah. You know, they, they turn white as a ghost. And they're like, holy cow, you know, I just put a contract in there last week. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever been compromised from some getting their sensitive information there was out there? in Japan that got compromised. Um, I haven't heard of any here yet. I mean, Google isn't going to want to let that get publicized. You know, Google's thing is they got to be the king of the search engine. Sure. You know, and right now they get they get something like ten billion words a day running through that thing. Wow. Oh my god. Yeah. You know? But like that's see, you know, I read it's all indexed on search results. Where what search results? I'm just I'm curious because I don't like when I'm typing. Yeah, my kids are doing great in Google Translate. You know, and it's getting translated into German. Where is that going for for search results? I don't think that's going going too far. Yours, your example probably isn't going okay. too far. Well, it's, yeah, that but, front know, page, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, like, for the business stuff... Got it, um, got it, got it, got it. You know, and it's it's not so much that it's going to get indexed to the front page. It's going to be that, you know, a, a law firm, you know, with really good internet tools is going to be able to dig in there and find all these communications that you had and Moss. use them against you in a, in a, in a Moss court could case, find it. You know? Yeah, I'm sure he could. <laughs> No, see that now it kind of clicks. Yeah, if they could find that stuff, yeah. use it again. Oh my god! You know, well, uh, I mean, law firms. They, they, there's guys out there now. They can find. I mean, your first post you ever made. You know, back in 2003. Right. You know, they will find that first post. Well, know, I was that. watching the Silk Road documentary, and that's how they found the guy that was running Silk Road was like, one of his early posts, like when he was. It's all there. Yeah, same years username, old. Yeah. just backed out of right, and then Tor, he, he, yeah. C- yeah. C- catch me at this email address. Uh-huh. And this yeah. week, the guy from Kick-Ass Torrents, that's how they caught him too, right? It was basically based on a Bitcoin address that went back to an apples at me.com. Oh, my God. Basically a crazy web. They put this together and they arrested the guy from one of the leading torrent sites in the world. Well, everybody in this room and your audience, they all know anything you put online. It's there forever. Oh yeah, you know. But they didn't tell us like that. Even beginning. those pictures that that happened that one time <laughs> <laughs> that I swear I deleted that, that aren't there. Anyway. So I, I, I guess just from a, a local perspective, so I'm like, what's it been like trying to grow this company here in the Metro Detroit area? It's challenging here. You know, this is not a globalization, an enthusiastic. Well, see, yeah, because like you don't really like when you think. Translation, international business, that kind of stuff. Detroit's not at the top of that list. No, no, we're not. You know, I mean, actually, right now, seventy-five percent, eighty percent of our new users, they're all out of state. Um, you know, and and that's just, you know, unfortunately, here in Detroit, you know, globalization kind of it has that negative connotation. You know, we had plants close. Yeah, because it, it, globalization becomes outsourcing. Right. Uh, but you yeah. know, it's bigger than that. And uh, you know, and for every job it, it killed, it made two more. Yep. You know, but. They weren't all here, you know. So growing in Detroit, getting, you know, and we're conservative. This is a conservative town, you know. So uh, growing it here is is a little tougher. Um, But, you know, it's just a matter of time. It's kind of like email, right? We all use MailChimp. We all use Constant Contact or one of those. Everybody's got a subscription now, right? Well, eventually everybody's going to have some sort of translation app subscription, whether it's Paraphrase or something else. So what about outside of the business market? Is there any kind of... Are you doing anything in the consumer space? Like if if I go to Turkey in September like I'm supposed to, but Air France won't refund my money because there's crazy shit going on in Turkey. <laughs> and Air France, I'm really mad at you. If I end up going to Turkey, can I use a paraphrase You want to service? swear at them in Turkish? I would love to swear at them in Turkish. <laughs> or I, I have family there, so I'd love to be able to talk to my family in Turkish. I mean, is there something that paraphrase is doing in the consumer market We're as well? We're not doing anything in the consumer market right now. I mean, really what paraphrase is right now, it's – it's a uh, it's it's a mission. It's solving the world's translation challenges. Whatever that leads to, it, you know, it's bigger than an app. Whatever that leads to, whatever that becomes, that's what it becomes. Well, and it's so, and it sounds like you've started in the B two B space, which I mean, a lot of companies do before they start their public consumer play. So, right. You know, there's one pr- pretty cool technology out there called Waverly Labs that is making these. Oh, the ear in ear, yeah. You know. It's like the uh, thing from uh, oh gosh, Star Trek, the translator, yeah. no, or the uh, the Babel fish from oh, Babel, uh, yeah, yes. absolutely, yeah. But we'll see. I mean, they're using Google Translate. I mean, relationships are hard enough right now. You know, I don't need a Google Translate service to uh, to ma- mess up my relationship. I can do that on my own, right? On a completely side topic, didn't they have a thing where you could look at signs in other languages yeah. and translate it to? Is, yeah. Does that exist today? Or yeah, is that- everybody's got that. I mean, Microsoft's got that. Google's got that. We can put it in our app too. Oh. Um, 
you know, the next big thing is artificial intelligence, getting to that point where you can produce these translations like the ones you're looking for without any human intervention. And we'll see, you know, when that happens. Okay. Huh. Interesting. All right, so where do we where do we uh, send people to find out more about Paraphrase and find out more about it? Paraphrase.com. So P A I R. Yeah, P A I R A P H R A S E. Okay. Dot com. I think I got that right. Yeah. Yeah. Free subscription, thousand words a month. Try it out. Oh, if not you bad. Like it. Use it more. Very cool. Awesome. I like Rick. Appreciate the time you. spent with us. Well, thank Look, you for having uh, me. Keep in touch with us as your company grows. Love to have you back on again in the future. We'll and uh, we will be back in segment three. JD and Ross from Comedy for Cancer. This is the IT and the D show, and uh, we'll be right back. IT and the D. Read, meet, listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. Hi, I'm Brittany Daniel from The Game, and you're listening to IT and the D show. IT in the D dot com. <laughs> This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back. This is segment three, episode 155 of the one and only IT in the D show, the number one ranked technology podcast on SoundCloud. This week, we are broadcasting live here in Royal Oak, Michigan at Podcast Detroit. This is Bob, the sales guy, hanging out with Dave the Geek, Nuri the FNG. Find us online, IT in the D.com. You know the rest. Don't forget August 4th, mark your calendars, podcast or meetup, activate gaming. Uh, we'll be hanging out. We had a great turnout last time, had a fun time. Should be a great time this time as well. And then the 18th, we're back at uh, Blackfin, okay. back room, usual. I miss it's been, like, it's been like forever since we've been there. It has. Will there be as many shenanigans at Blackfin as there were at Firebird? <sighs> it does seem like our downtown events get a little more shenanigan-y than, than the Royal Oak ones do, which is surprising. That's surprising. That bourbon, that Firebird. None. none we keep, I will no. never drink again as long <laughs> as I live. It, it tastes like, <laughs> dude, it, it tastes like bad decisions, and it triggers bad decisions. That's all there is to it. But it's delicious. It absolutely is. Yeah. They're like, hey, we got our own blend. We went down to Kentucky. I'm like, yes, I'm drinking that. Line that up, yeah. And there's Four bad times. things in there. <laughs> Hey, before we get rolling, though, so this segment of the IT and the D show is brought to you by Earth Class Mail. Um, Earth, kind of cool, had a couple conversations with these guys so far. Earth Class Mail moves your snail mail to the cloud, giving you instant access 24-7, integrates with all the tools and services that you use every day. In the grand scheme of things, it's kind of crazy. We've moved everything we do for business over to the digital world, but we still need to pick up, sort, walk out to the mailbox, and manage physical mail. With Earth Class Mail, you get all your mail scanned and accessible online 24-7. You can search your mail, send invoices over to your accounting software, sync important documents into cloud storage, deposit checks, and really just make running your business a whole lot easier. But Dave, is it secure? Uh, it absolutely is. They're actually HIPAA compliant, which doesn't suck. That means there's a whole lot of rules and regulations that protect your shit running in Earth Class Mail. Uh, so so you also get a real professional address to share publicly with customers, business partners, and investors. That's the cool part we talked about last week. And actually, this is something you might want to think about being here in Metro Detroit. Um talking with our friend from Paraphrase. So you can get an address, uh, let's say, in San Francisco or where all these other companies are located, but you don't actually have to be there. Uh, and then they take – like you get mail there. They scan it. They put it out in the cloud for you. You can run your invoices and all that fun stuff through it. Got attorneys doing it. It's kind of a cool thing. Uh, so you never need to worry about someone showing up at your front door if you run a business from your home. So here's the deal. We have – I've now checked out Earth Class Mail. I think it's a brilliant solution that's perfect for businesses and independent entrepreneurs of all types. So here's what you do. You visit earthclassmail.com. You get your first month of service free when you sign up using promo code, not coupon code. Coupon code. There's still no Q no, no, in that effing word. It's a coupon. <laughs> I'm from the South. It's coupon. It's a promo. It's coupon. It, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is it soda or pop? Go, go out the door it wall depends. and just shut your face. And okay. they're all Coke. Throw yeah. out the door wall. That's right. It's clear Coke, orange Coke. There's no, yeah, whatever. Uh, so once again, it's earthclassmail.com. Get a free month of service when you sign up using promo code IT in the D. That's earthclassmail.com and offer code IT in the D. Coupon code. Offer code. Coupon. Less Coupon. filling. Rabbit season. <laughs> Duck season. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we're joined by a couple friends of ours and they are doing a awesome thing for, I guess, what do you call it? Kids with Cancer. It's called Comedy for Cancer. It is Friday, September 30th at the Warren Community Center Auditorium. I know that place very well. My kids have done a couple plays there. J.D. Marshall, Ross Katarko in the house. Guys, appreciate you coming out. Thanks for having us. I no appreciate problem. it. No problem. So I guess, J.D., if you want to walk, how did you – you, you founded this, correct? 
Yeah, I, I decided to uh, start these fundraisers and the best way to honor my daughter. Um, our last conversation we had was that she said the best day of her life was meeting Gabriel Iglesias. And we had planned when we started our website to not only help kids with cancer, but we wanted to do fundraisers. And, you know, I kind of tossed around the idea of doing wrestling because that was my background. And then the more I thought about it, everything we do, it's not about me. It's about her from the day when your daughter is first diagnosed with cancer and we get the official diagnosis. And we were told that she would not survive. They were hoping to prolong her life. Um, we never had that conversation with her. We didn't want her looking over her back every day for the rest of her life. We wanted her to enjoy it just like she did any other day, full of love and laughter. But I always had a feeling, you know, that she knew. And even with that, she wanted to help others. When we were at the hospital, we kept requesting if they could do anything for us. I said, is there any other family like us we can talk to? How, how do we go from dealing with our daughter that has an inoperable brain tumor at 13 years old to her brother that's 11 years old? It's, it, it's two different dynamics when you're dealing with these kids. And uh, at every turn, it was no. So as we started putting, you know, I started getting an idea about doing something like this. And then she got a letter from uh, Anthony Mulcary from Hotel Impossible. And her idea was we were going to fix the hospital pediatric unit so they had more toys and more stuff for kids because people were taking them. And uh, we started working with Royal Oak Beaumont and doing some stuff with Children's Miracle Network. Uh, we put the site together, a missionoflove.com, which is now a nonprofit charity corporation. And as of last week, became a national charity, 501c3. And uh, what that does is once a month, we go out and we give a child a gift that's battling cancer, and we call it the Best Day Award because her, of our last conversation, again, saying the best day of her life was meeting Gabriel Iglesias. And it was literally eight days from meeting Gabriel is when she goes into the coma that led us to 27 days in hospice. And people say, what a tragedy that is, that for 27 days you had to sit in hospice. And... No, the tragedy is I lost my daughter to cancer. That's the tragedy. The fact that in 40 years, they're still treating her cancer the same way because they only give 4% of funding to childhood cancer research in a, in a national budget. That, that's the real tragedy in all this. The 27 days allowed me to, to know that I wanted to do this, that I wanted to finish what she started. And as we got going and we were doing the gifts a month, you know, we meet these families, and they become like part of your family. And then you hear the real horror stories that nobody sees. Besides your child has cancer, there are families that have lost their house. They have lost their cars. They have their phones shut off because they take the Family Medical Leave Act to be with their child. I've been working with Angels of Hope for years, and there's not a dry eye in the house. No. I mean, every doesn't matter what golf outing doesn't matter like and that's the thing that i was going to bring up to you is you know the 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 comedy and cancer it's typically two words that 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 don't go together and not but, so much kids are ha ha not me right no but at the, at the same token it's like sometimes you just need to just stop thinking about life and just laugh at stupid jokes once in a while well, right? we like to say laugh to keep from crying yeah you yeah. know and and it's a, it's it's a way to forget about life for a while it, it is to get away we have, uh, you know, families of children that are battling cancer that have attended the shows. Uh, at our debut show in April, we actually surprised a family with a gift, which was the only emotional part of the show because we didn't want to do it on that level. Now, on September 10th at Helmick Park, we're doing a rally, and that's strictly business where we're going to raise awareness for childhood cancer because most people don't even know that September's Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. They, they, they can tell you Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But they don't know that. How about you know, every month is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month? I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, uh, plug September365.com. We yeah. have a website where we're trying to do that. Till we get more awareness for this, we think independent research is going to be the way to go. Create competition. Then the national budget will fall in line and start giving more money to these kids. And, you know, and then understand the other, like I said, again, the other battles that the families have, that they're losing all this stuff. And as much as I was giving a gift to a child every month, I'm still hearing the horror story from the family of what they're dealing with. And it was like, how could we do more? 
So then we decided to do these fundraisers. And, you know, the, the number four represents the budget, you know, if the national budget, 4%. That's why we put it in there. You know, the joke at the show was, you know, like, well, I think guy can't spell four. That's why he put comedy, numbers four, <laughs> cancer.com. And it's like, no, so we use that as an, as an educational tool. And, uh, you know, it, yeah, comedy and cancer, you don't think it goes together. But uh, I'm, a, I'm a big Jim Gaffigan fan. Yeah. And my Likewise. my son is uh, still you know I'm not I'm not breaking any news. A lot of people close to us know this. He's still dealing with grief counseling, you know, from losing his sister. And uh, I watched a Jim Gaffigan special where he went off on a tangent of jokes about cancer, you know, and the c word and all this stuff. And he got upset and he left the room. And then afterwards, you know, I should, with you two guys, I shouldn't say C word, but, you know. <laughs> Every, we know when to let things ride. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, the well, I just said we have up, lines. I? <laughs> that right on a T for old Dave, wasn't I? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he left the room and he was upset. And I, I, I explained to him that Jim Gaffigan's mother died from cancer. Uh, I believe his grandma passed away from cancer. So, you know, it's. You can't hide from the fact that there are people that will make light of it, even if it's, you know, they've been uh, impacted yeah. by it. You know, it, it's something I would never do. It's like I have a line that I won't cross at these shows. Like, I, I, I'll perform on them. It's like I won't do anything death-related. I won't do anything, you know, cancer-related. But, you know, I will tell some of the stories about, you know, that we went through in the hospital. Yeah. It's crazy stuff always happens in the hospital. And, uh, you know, what, what better way, you know, to, to help a family out than you can give them two hours of comedy and at the end of the night hand them a bunch of money? Yeah. It, you know, I mean, it's the equivalent of sitting in a bar with Dave for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Except we don't have alcohol at Without the hangover. Yeah, without, <laughs> yeah, without the hangover. Well, no, I mean, it is. I mean, it's, you know, it, it wasn't a, a child thing, but I mean, like, my mom died, you know, when I was 16 of cancer. So, I mean, it, it, it is a... It, it's a thing that hits close to home. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why you know I, I reached out and said, yeah, let's have JD on. I mean, it, so I, I guess you know when is the event? What's the lineup look like? What should people expect? That sort of thing. Well, this one I, I'm really happy with. Uh, our first show was tremendous. We got a lot of good feedback on it. The crowd really loved it to the point. Our second from last act was so popular that we're actually bringing him back down the road as a headliner. And on September 10th at our free cancer awareness rally, which is going to be some sad stories, we wanted to end on a high note. So we're actually going to have him perform at that, too, because his name's Steve Lind. He, done, he did such a tremendous job. But uh, September 30th being the last day of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, that's why we're doing the pre-show meet and greet with Zach Gowan. Because a lot of people don't know that Zach Gowan is a childhood cancer survivor. That at eight years old, he lost his legs you know, leg to cancer, and he's overcome that. Well, and uh, for our listeners who don't know, I mean, Zach went on, he lost his leg at eight years old, went on to become a professional wrestler in the WWE. At age, what, 20? Yeah. 19? Yeah. Yeah, yeah on top of that, ever. even at, I mean, I mean, at that time, that was unheard of. Oh, yeah, dude, I mean, and still to this day, whips unholy ass in the ring. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, and he just did American Ninja Warrior, like, yeah. what, a month ago in yeah. Channel 4? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah I got to wow. tell you, every time I see Zach, I'm impressed. I actually went to his benefit show in Fort Wayne, Indiana, to do a gift on his behalf for a child there, and he was so appreciative of that that is the minute I asked him about doing this, he was like, "I'm in, cool, you know, I'm in." And we also got Mike Green, uh, who's traveled all across the United States, done a lot in Vegas, Atlantic City. Uh, matter of fact, just had to chip in here at the Royal Oak Comedy Castle. I guess somebody came to town and got sick. Probably not saying much for the cuisine on the airline that they were on. But, 
Uh, Paolo Bugiani is his MC. He's uh, he's very talented. Tim Rollins actually does comedy and juggles, which I find hard to believe. At the actually, same time, yeah, I just started watching stuff. And yeah, I I, I, was like, I, I watched I, it. I'm like, how how do you do this? I I, like, I can do neither. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know it's, it's, it's hard enough doing comedy and remembering stuff, but let alone you got all these things flying in the air, all these balls in the air. Yeah, oh. shut up, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> once, no, I just once again, I, welcome back to Dave's tea. Yeah. If you no, if you uh, if you break it down, like comedy itself is probably one of the hardest things to do, like, and just to make people laugh that aren't ready to laugh. Like there was a guy I don't know if Nuri if you saw this on Reddit today. It was a guy in London. Apparently, they have a like a gong show. Oh, I saw. And it, you get it, yes. five minutes, and the guy basically that crowd booed off twenty five comedians. This guy stood up there and owned the crowd, and to do that. It's a it's a talent like like just to be able to get up in front of a crowd of people, dude. It's all it, it's so much timing and stage presence. It's it's like I've always said, everyone everyone in IT should be forced to take an improv class and should be forced to be a bartender for like a year. Yes, yeah. so true. Because I mean, yeah. it teaches you how to read. Because I mean, that's I mean, you know, I mean, I did stand up for a couple of years, what? and I mean, and those. How did I not know this story? Eh, we'll talk after. It's always when you weren't living in the city he was at at the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got sucked. Anyway, back into it. You got what? <laughs> I, I realized I put the pause at the wrong location there. Back, yeah. Anyway, That's that whole timing. Blame, thing. blame the pause. <laughs> right. No, but I mean, it, dude, it's it is. It's, I mean, it's it's insanely hard being able to read crowds and just you know being able to gauge because you do. You kind of have to think on your feet. You know, it's the whole you know no battle plan ever survived the first engagement with the enemy. You ha- you in your head you have three hours of material for a twenty minute set because you have to know all right crowd's not liking that let's go here crowd's not let's go here I'm not liking anything quick switch the masturbation jokes <laughs> right. there's nothing better though than watching the heck that's what I always love is the heckler jokes or when the crowd just as not a comic it. you almost pray for them some nights and because you know you never you you're not gonna win against the guy with the mic you're not yeah no. Well, uh, you've seen it sometimes, but when the guy... <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> like, like Joe Rogan was practically masterful with 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 handling that uh-huh. and to me that's when that's when you're good when you when you when you're quick on your feet and you can do that right I, I forget the comedian's name overseas that he begs the crowd to do it he's like he just stops the, in the middle of his act and he's like, all right, let me have it and and they just start yelling out stuff. And he just burns them, and, it, and and the show, I mean, went from, I you know, you're holding the remote like ah, I don't know if I like this guy, but then all just of a sudden a, he starts that crowd thing, and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna need a, a season pass, man. And, <laughs> and you're right, there is a thing about reading the room, you know, and timing, and sometimes those both come together. Mm-hmm. There are some crowds. Um, you know, if they've been induced with alcohol, that you are going to have to slow the show down. Two drink minimum. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I'll never it. forget Emo Phillips uh, at the across from the Imperial, the chaplains. Yes. Yeah, yes, and yes. we we got to meet because of Mike knew his agent, so we got to meet him. And he looks me straight in the face. He's like, "I don't think they understood me." And he goes, you guys were the only ones laughing. No, they probably didn't. And it's like, and I go, no, you were hilarious. He goes, yeah, you guys were the only ones laughing. And we're like, well, I don't know what else to say. You know, like, if they don't get you, they don't get you. Yeah. And he has a canned bit. He didn't really talk to the crowd much. Right. Yeah, that, that, that you know, I mean, like, Gabriel Glacius and uh, Jim Gaffigan, they have two different speeds, sure. you know. But it works for both of them. You know, like, Jim Gaffigan's timing, I think, is genius. Oh, yeah. Uh, another one I like is Bill Burr. Yep. It's like, yeah, he just, his timing is impeccable. You know, he, he can just, you know, say, go F yourself. And yeah. you know, it's funny just the way he does it. See, with me, it was always Rodney and Carlin. Oh, yeah. Those, that's it. See, like, when, I, when I grew up, I, my daughter was actually, the first time that I knew she liked comedy, she was, like, closing her laptop. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, what's she looking at? You know, the dad comes down <laughs> and slams the lid. got to have this talk, you know. Like, uh, hey, honey, is something you need to talk to your daughter about? <laughs> no, but I sit home, too, because, like, uh, I sit with my daughter when we wait for my younger one to get out half an hour. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, so put Jim Gaffigan on like a YouTube on the on the yeah. Bluetooth, and it's it's hysterical. And she was hiding yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, she was hiding watching Gabriel on YouTube. 
you know. And I always see Gabriel. She will not. She would not call him fluffy. Uh, like she thought that was an insult. She's like, oh, that's people making fun of him. I'm like, no, he calls himself that, yeah. so it's totally cool. But I explained to her, I go, see, when I was your age, you know, and and you know, and I th- then I hated myself because I never wanted to be that guy. Right. You know, goes, uh, when I was right. your age, yeah, we used to, yeah, we had to get up to change the. TV. It was well, it was the Carlin albums. It yeah. was the Richard Pryor yeah, albums. Oh my god! Yeah, it was albums, or you stayed up late and you watched the Tonight Show uh-huh. to the very end, where he'd bring on Don Rickles or yep. Rodney Dangerfield. Went to the doctor yesterday. Said I, every time I look in the mirror, I feel nauseous. He goes, "What's wrong with me?" He goes, "I don't know, but your eyesight's perfect." <laughs> <laughs> See again that it's it's stupid, well, but it's hilarious. Well, wasn't you know? it? Yeah, I think it was Rodney that actually wasn't he him that started on HBO the comedy oh, yeah. specials yeah. that would probably led to like comedy. You know, that's, oh, how, that's how Dice got his start. There's so oh, yeah. many that yeah. yeah that was no Rodney was Tonight Show. I mean, he didn't start comedy till he was in his early 40s. Yeah, no, I know. No, but like the late, like the HBO like I, I think it was even before specials. Death Comedy Jam. Yeah, Dangerfield's like. Comedy out of oh, Dangerfield's club. Got there their was, yeah. John yeah, Stewart, like yeah, Rob Schneider, Dice. Yeah, those, all those guys. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that was even before Deaf Comedy Jam started. Yeah. Oh, it Boy, definitely was. Dice. Oh, yeah. I remember that name. I, I, guy sells out the Palace of Auburn Hills, and then like, <laughs> he's at Andy Almos. Like, you know what's funny about? What you know what's funny and now about? Now he looks like our buddy Tulio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know what's funny about Dice? He flat out said, "I make more money right now in Vegas than I ever did my entire career." Oh yeah. So like that's the, the you know the whole thing yeah. about getting booked in Vegas, you know there's something to that. Well, uh, well first off, free room and board. <laughs> yeah, you know you don't have to pay for anything. Well, no, it's different. Like my uh, my good friend of mine uh, was close with Amazing Jonathan, and it's different. If you're booked, either you book a, a hotel and you owe the hotel X amount of dollars, and you pray that you sell out and make money, yeah. or they book you. Right, a lot of those guys are on a. You rent this room, but you owe me uh, okay. whatever thousand of dollars. It was like the residency. Well, like it depends Elton who John you are. Does. Depends yeah. who you are. Yeah. Right. A lot of the, the mid guys, they, they have to make sure you try to well, sell out that know, room. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Like Gabriel, we we talk to him still quite a bit, and his manager, and uh, he he does a lot of shows like that where yep. they pay him to come in. I'm pretty sure Caesars Windsor, September 25th, giving Gabriel the free plug. I'm sure, he don't need it, but like he did the Jackson. Uh, county fair last year and he was he was in the middle of a comic book joke and he looked directly at my wife and i and i'm like shaking my head like no 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 don't do that here they're not gonna get it. not at the gym no they don't even know you're wearing a batman shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and, and it's like and my wife's like he's doing the same routine he did you know like yeah back in march and i'm like Honey, he's not from Michigan. He didn't know like Jackson's only like an hour and ten minutes away. Right. You know, it's like, and and he got paid to come and do the show at the fair. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's at the fair. You're eating elephant ears. You're in the Ebrie. So eat your funnel cake and your yeah, three dollar you, beer and shut up and you're laugh. You're probably at halfway through the show going. So when's this Iglesias guy sing? Yeah, I thought Julio Iglesias was going to be <laughs> here. I think. It's <laughs> the one of the good ones I've loved before. It's <laughs> going on. Is this the lesser Iglesias brother? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so where do people find uh, tickets for the show, upcoming events, that kind of stuff? Where can they go buy tickets? And, and yeah, Tickets are available online on comedy4cancer.com. Comedy4cancer.com. Uh, we're going through Eventbrite, and we also do have a PayPal app. We okay. have uh, handicap seating. Um, tickets start at $13. The highest oh, price seat is $15. God, it's a great venue. My kids were in Fiddler on the Roof there and a few other yeah, places. It, yeah, it's, it's great seating. I mean, it, for the amount of seats that it has and the way that they set this building up, it has a giant stage. And I mean, there's not a bad seat in the house. And on top of that, if you buy a ticket to the event, you get a raffle ticket, and one of the people that come to the show will win a $100 Best Buy gift card. So besides getting two hours of stand-up comedy, having a good time, you have a chance to win a hundred dollar Best Buy gift card. You get one twentieth of a set of monster. No, cables. JD, and one thing we forgot to touch on, and I think it's very important, is we were talking during the break about other charities where you know the CEOs are making a million dollars and they're giving barely anything back. You, yeah. you were saying straight up. I mean, I guess I'll I'll leave it in your words, but you're giving a hundred percent back. We give one hundred percent of everything that we take in to the families. We have no employee of our corporation there's nobody taking money out of our charity matter of fact i refuse 
to take any donations unless Best Buy wants to take it over, who I am talking with, that the Best Day Award always comes out of my pocket. I always do that gift out of my own pocket because it makes, to me, it's more special. Sure. And, and Best Buy, a couple of times, has, has heard about it and said, hey, can we get in on this? And actually giving the kid extra gifts while we were at the store. We actually uh, did a family, we, we helped them out for Christmas, and the, and the bill ended up being over 400 and some dollars, and Best Buy put almost $170 towards that. Hmm. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it's... It's like a great feeling to make a child that's fighting for their life yep. smile. You know, I mean, I can't give them the best day of their life, but with that award, at least it makes the day a little bit better. I appreciate you guys, you know, letting me come on here and talk about it. Uh, I hope I see you out there. Absolutely. Uh, you we'll know, be there. Because we're definitely planning an after show party. Well, that's the other thing about this event, too, and it's kind of like you were talking about, just to see that, that child's smile for best day award, but... Once the, when that family is there watching this show, you don't remember why we're actually there. Like, we're there for the comedy for cancer. We are there for the benefiting of that family. But when those comedians hit the stage, everybody forgets all of that. Yep. It is literally just there for the fun to, to sit and watch other people's demise and them talk about it, which is probably some of the greatest things, you know, and be able to laugh at other people versus having to deal with all the stuff that you have going on. For and and right he's now. right. On, on that night, the uh, the families that we helped out with the debut event, uh, it's, it's good news, bad news. Uh, the, I never in my life knew anybody named Noah except for the guy that got conned in the building the art. And I still don't get that one. How do the neighbors not know something's going on? This violates your homeowners association. Yeah, why, why, are there, wait, why are there elephants in Noah's backyard? The condo specifically And how do they know if the mosquitoes were male like, and female? Wait a minute, aren't one of you a contractor? Did you do this? I mean, come on. It's not like it's Home Depot and I got the lumber right here. This isn't up to code. Yeah, so, so we, had, we actually had a, a baby that had cancer. And then we, we had a child that was nine years old. In Channel 4, on the nine-year-old child, Channel 4 did a story on the fact that, you know, he beat cancer. He had bone cancer. They took out part of his shoulder blade. He was declared cancer-free. Nobody can explain this. Two weeks later, he goes in for his scans, just to make sure everything's fine. He has numerous tumors in his lungs. Oh. He was given a 7% chance of survival. Uh, luckily, he's still with us. And tomorrow at 9 a.m., I'll be at the hospital in what we call in our community the all-in scans. Yeah. Do we continue treatment or do we just stop everything because they think it may have spread? And then on the other side of that, the baby that had cancer had a kidney removed, had Wilms tumor, and part of the other kidney removed. And today... He went in for his scans, and in exa- it's been exactly one year that he's cancer-free. So, I mean, there are some yeah. success stories in this, but if that's the dynamic of, of what we do. You know, we, we had that night where the, both the parents were there having the time of their life. Help, I mean, they were into the raffles. Like, we have Brightside Dental, and other people come up and donate gift baskets to raffle off. There's a um, booze basket, guys, by the way, so I'm sure you'll be. Yeah, there, yeah. there's a, a, what? There's a, a booze basket. basket oh, we're cheer, all in I for that one. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were like going to move the show. No, we'll come up with something to donate, whether it's uh, some autographed football or we'll figure something out. Oh, we'll, that's we'll, awesome. We'll get something. I appreciate you guys. that. Thanks, guys. We got some people we can blackmail. Exactly. <laughs> Black all of them. We'll, 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 we'll call in mind. a favor with the family. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> One day I will come to you and need memorabilia. This is <laughs> my daughter's wedding. Just like I'm going to come to you one day and have you do the show. When we, when we finally do Dear Cancer, go after oh, yourself. Oh, I know. So we can put over 18 on the flyer and we can just, just turn it loose. No, this is funny. This is, I, this is, I mean, it's terrible to say this. But there are some families that are begging for that show. They're like, yeah. just to go on stage and just to turn it loose. But I'll that, tell you what, that first show, uh, some of those guys didn't hold back. And it yeah, was, it was. Some of those kids probably shouldn't have been in the audience. But <laughs> we still had a blast. Okay, okay. Like. Now, one of them's my son. So, uh, I mean, you know, one of them was like one of the kids we were helping. Right. So, I mean, what can we do about that, you know? But it is what it is. At the same time, I thought it was PG-13. I mean, you watch Family Guy? 
Yeah. I mean, right. You know, kids watch Family Guy. On PG-13 means th- I think it's a lot different these days than it was when we were 13. Oh, I yeah. Mean, oh, I, yeah. I, I, think that, I think outside of the families, the youngest kid that was there was like 12 years old. Oh, well, then, man. He kicked me in the shit, and he goes, this sucked. You guys should have swore more. <laughs> The worst damn show ever. PG thirteen when we grew up was like you were lucky if you got side boob. Like, I, want my, yeah, I want my money and my they applause might have back. You. Suck. <laughs> hey JD Ross, appreciate you guys coming out. Comedy the number four cancer dot com. Mark your calendar September thirtieth. Friday, 8 p.m., Warren Community Center. Um, yeah, we'll definitely be there, and it sounds like a, a phenomenal time. And it's just, yeah, I love this stuff, man. We're like, again, the Angels of Hope, and it's just like, what, just a chance, yep. just a chance to forget about life for a while. I couldn't imagine having three kids going through anything like that. And again, hearts, uh, hearts go out to everybody. It's perspective, man. Uh, no, no question. But appreciate you guys coming out, and we look forward to uh, helping out your benefit. It's going to wrap things up for episode 155 of the IT in the D show. We had Rick from Paraphrase. Thanks for hanging out through the break, man. Absolutely. On behalf of uh, myself, Bob, and Dave, and Nuri. I'd like to thank you guys for coming out. We appreciate the support of Merit and Quip and Earth Class Mail. Appreciate the support. As always, find us at itnd.com. Just remember, drink up your drinks, get your phone numbers. You don't got to go home. You just got to get the hell out of here. See you next week. Drive careful. Beat it. The emergency destruct system is now activated. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies? See them driven before you? And they hear the lamentation of the women. Long live Vlad. You've saved your life. Have a nice day. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. Make the run. The run. The run. Game over, man. Game over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so. Well, especially with the back doors open. Yo, hold up. Time out. Time out. Y'all take a chill. You need to cool that shit out. And that's the double truth. Ruth. Bob loves it in the camp. I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. Mm. That's why I like it in the can. Joe owns the trees. Owns. 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 Fear me. <laughs> My job is to make sure this program is morally upright and cultural and wholesome. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Why would, like... Buick put their cars next to like the Bentleys. Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, I can't take that position. That yeah. analogy sucks because it's right. Because you're getting your eight track tuned up. <laughs> Are we at a break yet? No! Yeah, so now I'm just like doing like stupid stuff to make me laugh. Venture capital is not the end game. When are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. It's my show. I can say what I want. Yeah. Kiss my ass. <laughs> go home. <laughs> unplug. <laughs> get off the goddamn internet. You are everything that is wrong with the internet right now. You're so white right now. <laughs> I, I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. <laughs> show no. I love this city. I was banging oh, on the way. Wrong. Really? Should we talk about this? Yeah, yeah, team. <laughs> should I keep going or should I stop? Can I just say, it's been great being on a show that talks about Mickey Rooney dying for 20 seconds and then poop for 10 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show.